I'm Rhonda Walker. I'm the founder and president of the Rhonda Walker Foundation. You start with this little idea, and, and now, although it was a, a big idea, but you really didn't know the magnitude of how we were gonna get from point A to Z. To basically be Rhonda Walker's daughter, right? <laughs> the, t the TV lady who I watch every, every morning before I go to school, I get to be in her proximity, her mentorship for the next five years. I was intrigued at the idea that someone would be interested in investing in my daughter. To see that, oh, these girls are just like me and they are going through the same things I'm going through. What keeps me coming back is the outcomes, the impact, like the formula works. Rhonda found a formula that works and it works. You'll notice that the time that I started at Channel 4 and the time that I started this organization are simultaneous. And it really is for a reason. I was born in Detroit. I watched Channel 4 News. I idolized Carmen Harlan. I started out in TV as a traffic reporter and a weathercaster. But five years into my career, I got the job as the morning news anchor on WDIV Local 4. And it was gonna be another six months before I would actually start that job. Sounds good, Rachel. And of course, keep it right here with Local 4 because we are gonna have continuing live coverage. Sometimes when you are in that phase in your life when you feel like you've been gifted something so huge, I felt like there was something greater that I was supposed to do with it. Not just accept that job and ride off into the sunset and, you know, have the job of my dreams. I felt a greater responsibility that I was supposed to give back and do more because God blessed me with the job that I always wanted. And so I started thinking about what more I can do. Here I had these months of not working where I could actually have some real purpose with that time. And I chose to visit middle schools. I contacted schools and said, I wanna to talk to your teen girls. I wanna to talk to them about making good choices, about the good and the bad about happy and sad. The point was to help arm them with a sense of who they are. I wanted to try to develop leadership skills and to help them with just their confidence and being in their own skin. And that it's okay if you don't look like a supermodel, you know, love the girl in the mirror. And so I would go to these schools, talk to the kids for an hour, two hours, however long the school would give me, and then I would leave. And I was probably about five or six schools in, and I realized that how much of an impact am I really having? You know, a year or two years from now, the girls may remember the lady from TV came and spoke at my school, but am I really changing and impacting their lives? One of the girls said to me, well, what do you do if nobody in your family encourages you? Everybody tells you that you're never gonna amount to anything more than they have, and I wanna do more. She's like, I wanna be better than they are. I, I have bigger aspirations and dreams in my life, but everybody puts me down and tells me that I can't can't do it. And I thought, whoa. In, the, in that split second of listening to her, I thought about my own parents and how encouraging they always were, how they made a point of exposing us as kids and encouraging us and being supportive of everything. And so when I left that school that day, I knew exactly what I was supposed to do with my life. I knew exactly what I was supposed to do with this incredible blessing to be able to have the job of my dreams. It was to empower and impact the lives of teen girls in Detroit. Kids that are underprivileged, kids that are promising, but just may not have the resources and the support in order to truly live strong, happy, empowered lives. The mission of the Rhonda Walker Foundation is to empower inner city teen girls towards becoming strong, confident, successful, and moral future leaders. It's a five-year program. The girls, we meet them when they're 12 and 13 years old, coming out of the seventh grade, and we stay with them through their eighth grade year, their ninth grade year, their sophomore year, their junior year, their senior year, until they graduate. And it's about being with them to help with their development, to 
create a sisterhood. We're like a family. You know, five years of a child's development is a long time. We have several pillars to the organization. One is personal development, one's career development and college preparation. It's the mentoring relationships that we try to develop. And there's also health and wellness. And wellness is mental wellness, it's physical wellness, it's what you're eating and putting in your body. All of these things can affect how you feel. We have spirit, yes we do, we have spirit, how about you? Another component of the organization is community service. It's giving back. We try to do different community service projects throughout the year, but our biggest one is a Christmas party that we do for a homeless shelter. In 2003, I was going around and talking to these different schools in the early part of the year and ended up speaking at this event for the Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries. And I'm like, I'm adopting that shelter. And we're gonna make sure that Everybody has gifts, and the kids in the foundation are gonna serve the food to these families. So we're gonna have a big feast, we're gonna have gifts for all the kids and all of the women in the shelter, and we're all gonna hang out together. It teaches the girls that no matter where you are in your life, you have something that you can give to somebody else. I feel connected to you, and I just want you to know that, that I love you and that, that I do this just, just from the bottom of my heart, and I never want anything in return. I just want you to be happy. And if it's, if it's just today that you get to have joy and smile and forget about all the things that may be going on in your life, like I just want you to have that today. Our mentoring pillar is a very important component. We try to match each girl one-on-one -on -one with a mentor for at least one year. Being able to know that you have that one person that you can talk to about anything that's gonna expose you to their family, expose you to their church, take you you know, to different events and activities, and just have a friend. Have this woman that's in your life that listens to you, that cares about you. We have what's called 24-hour girl talk. We stay at a hotel, we have workshops throughout the day on various different topics, and then that night, we have a pajama party. And that is, we all put on our pajamas, we all gather in one room, and we just talk. We talk about whatever it is, our challenges are, what's bothering us. We do college preparation, so we're providing year-round tutoring just to help to supplement the education that they're getting. We do ACT and SAT test prep courses, and um, we help them with writing essays for their college applications. Sometimes kids have never even seen a college campus, and so not only do we expose them to colleges within the Metro Detroit area, like Eastern Michigan and Wayne State University, Oakland University, but we take them on a bus and we take them throughout different states to see historically black colleges and universities across the country. A lot of times in privileged families, they do a lot of things that kids that are underprivileged never get exposed to, never have the opportunity to do or go to. And so one of the first programs I've ever done, the first activity that I've ever done once I started the organization was summer camp. A lot of kids go to camp every summer, but there's a lot of kids that don't. And so, one, the summer camp is a way to get the kids out of their neighborhood, away from their family. We're out in the woods and it's spiders and well water and, you know, all these activities and bunk beds and sleeping bags, but it creates like this sisterhood. Our camp's called Camp I Can. We try to challenge the girls to do different activities that they might not otherwise want to try, like they may be afraid of heights, and we're encouraging them to climb up a 40-foot pole and walk across ropes. <laughs> I love going, and I love seeing the girls happy and smiling and trying new things and encouraging them and encouraging them to overcome their fears, and I do everything that they do. If I'm going to tell them to climb up that pole and, and wall climb and you know, do the ropes courses, I'm going to do it too. I would never ask you guys to do anything I would do. This is proof. I just think that the, the cultural awareness of who you are, where you came from is so important. Um, and also just to develop in them a sense of who we are as a world, you know, that it's not just this small place here where we are in Detroit, but there's so many different cultures, there's so many different places throughout the world and experiences that you can have. to expose them to the arts and to theater. And so that's something that's really important. And then also going to the museums and 
uh, just getting a chance for them to understand who they are. It's overwhelming. We have seven employees now. I have a CEO of the organization. We have over a million dollar budget. I remember when we had like $17,000 and then it kind of slowly crept up year by year. But to get to the point where we are now, it's remarkable. And I'm extremely proud. It's been a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of stress and a lot of worry. And at times, you know, not knowing if we're going to be able to fulfill the mission and keep going just because the resources weren't there. I'm incredibly thankful to have this purpose placed on my life. I take it very seriously, and sometimes people ask me why I do it, and I do feel like it's my purpose. I do feel like it's why I'm on this earth. I have a career that I love, amazing husband. I have an incredible family and a huge network of friends. I have a lot to be thankful for, that I get to enjoy, and I can't keep it all to myself. I have to share it and spread it. To watch a, a shy girl go from barely able to even say her name in front of our group of kids to being on this stage speaking in front of hundreds of people. Like I've seen it, I've seen it time and time and time again and it just never gets old.